Hello everyone. So in the earlier videos we talked about the energy and randomness that is entropy. These are the two factors which decide the spontaneity of the reaction. Now the question arises what is actually this entropy means. Now as I already told or discussed in the earlier video also that is the temperature is also the deciding factor the amount of the entropy or the randomness of the system. Now, if you have a system at 100 degrees Celsius and another system at 600 degrees Celsius. Now, if you are supplying 30 joules of energy to this system, you are having the system, suppose, and you are supplying 30 joules of energy to the system. So, this 30 joules of energy will be utilized in doing some work that will be completely utilized in doing some work. If the process is isothermal, means if the temperature is constant here, but if only 20 joules of energy is used to uh, expand, that is increasing the ra randomness of the system, for example, melting of ice here, means if you have supplied 30 joules of energy to this ice, out of these 30 joules, if only 20 joules are utilized by this system that is ice and the amount of it supplied or released at this constant temperature and pressure this is what we call as the enthalpy so here this 20 joules of energy which is utilized by this ice or the system to get converted into liquid form how much you have supplied you are supplying 30 joules so out of these 30 joules it is only 20 joules is used so this amount of energy which is actually utilized by this system to get converted from solid state to the liquid water that is what we call as the here yeah, uh, that can be used to decide whether the reaction is random or not. So the amount of ut utilizing expanding or, or increasing or decreasing that is what we call as the Q reverse. So what is this Q reverse? This is the amount of heat utilized in expanding that is increasing or decreasing entropy. Entrop increasing or decreasing entropy. So that is what we call as the Q reverse means the system can be expanded there might be increase in the entropy or there might be decrease in the entropy by utilizing this much amount of heat if the whole amount of heat is utilized that is 30 joules that is what we call as enthalpy isn't it so now out of these 30 you are utilizing only 20 joules so this is the amount of heat utilized in expanding during this expansion there might be increase or decrease in the entropy so that is what we call as the q reversible that is means if it is increased then q and if it is decreased then the reversible here so now at at I, as a uh, earlier in the initially i told you that at 100 degrees celsius and we are having the system at 600 degrees celsius so out of this if only 20 joules of energy or the heat is utilize so for per degree celsius this is the amount of heat means i'll write again 100 at 100 degree celsius 20 joules of energy or heat is utilized by this system so for 1 degree celsius what is the amount of heat utilized that is x so x can be calculated as 20 into 1 divided by it comes out to be 0 0.2 0 0.2 joules 0 0.2 joules per degree Celsius is that it so this 20 joules is nothing but the Q reversible okay so that is the heat absorbed per degree Celsius heat absorbed per degree Celsius temperature that is nothing but delta S this is equal to Q reverse upon T remember 
so we can calculate delta s that is change in entropy so change in temperature would be due to 20 joules of energy absorbed here got it so at this temperature 100 degrees celsius this is the 0.2 joules per degree celsius heat is absorbed or release whatever is the situation by the system here which is what we call as the q reversible now if the situation is like that at 600 degrees celsius what is the heat absorb or release per degree celsius so that can be calculated if 20 joules of energy is absorbed or released so what is the change or heat absorb per degree celsius that can be calculated as x so here x will be equal to 20 into 1 divided by 600 so approximately it comes out to be 0 0.032 joules per degree celsius now look at these two values here at 100 degree celsius this is the energy or heat thermal energy or the heat absorbed per degree celsius at 600 degree celsius this is the amount so this is 0 0.033 joules per degree celsius this is the amount of heat absorbed per degree celsius means at low temperature more heat is absorbed and at high temperature less amount of heat is absorbed so at low temperature randomness is more remember so we can conclude that when you are talking in the terms of entropy because what is this entropy delta s is equal to q reversible upon t here isn't it so here at low temperature at low temperature this randomness is more randomness is more and at high temperature randomness is less so you can see here how is this at low temperature more amount of heat is absorbed and at high temperature less amount of heat is absorbed so accordingly we can conclude that at low temperature randomness is more why because this entropy is inversely proportional to the temperature that is why at low temperature randomness is more and at high temperature randomness is less means this entropy change is inversely proportional to temperature whereas entropy change is directly proportional to this q reversible that is amount of heat absorbed so this can be explained by taking a simple example if you are standing in a silent class and you if you make some noise in that class so there you will you can hear that noise very clearly or the sound very clearly but instead of instead if you are uh, standing in market and if you are making the same noise that can't be heard so nicely in that crowded place means this situation is very important here so uh, from, from conversion of solid there will be low entropy and in liquid there will be moderate entropy and in gaseous molecule there will be more entropy means when this solid whenever they are the ordered one there will be low entropy because entropy is nothing but the randomness because these are these more solid molecules they are quite orderly arranged so there will be low entropy in case of liquid there will be moderate entropy moderate entropy and in case of this gaseous molecule gas molecules there will be more entropy so entropy will be more as they are more randomly arranged okay so the number of gaseous molecule if they are increasing in forming the product entropy increases so as there is increase in the entropy the process would be spontaneous now if the number of gaseous molecules is decreasing in forming the product entropy decreases and the product would be non spontaneous but this is not true everywhere whatever i just said that can be explained by this reaction that is formation of water molecule here both this reactant they appear in the gaseous form so if the gaseous form gaseous molecules they are converted into liquid form 
so here there are total three moles of gas molecules here there are number of moles are decreasing and the phase is also changing from uh, gaseous to liquid one so here according to this the entropy should be less here isn't it so here less entropy means if the entropy is less the process should be non spontaneous but here in this case this process is a spontaneous one remember as i already discussed in earlier videos also in case of exothermic and endothermic reaction the same happens here also so for this reaction more number of gas molecules means that there is a more randomness so when it is converted into liquid that decreases the randomness means less entropy so compared to this one so process should be non spontaneous actually but the this process is a spontaneous one another example i can quote here exactly opposite here this liquid is converted into here you can write twice h2 plus o2 here the gas both the gas mole, gas molecules are there forming so there are three moles of gas molecules here there are two moles of liquid isn't it so number of gas molecules are increasing here so naturally there will be more entropy so entropy increases in this case and the process would be a spontaneous one now looking at both the examples though there is uh, increase uh, increase in the more entropy in this case the process can be a spontaneous one it's fine but here in earlier example though there is decrease in the entropy still the process is spontaneous so there must be something else that is in addition to these two factors that is energy and entropy these are the two factors which decides the spontaneity of the re reaction so in addition to these two factors there must be another factor which decides the spontaneity of the reaction and here comes the second law of thermodynamics so we'll discuss it into the next video thank you